Human rights, absolutely, in totality, no, negate God's moral standard in the scripture. The two are diametrically opposed to each other. They are as far removed from each other as the East is from the West. So when the Pope says that they must be considered God-given, then absolutely it cannot be the God of the Bible. By the way, if you switch on your television, what do you hear? Law of God, law of God, law of God, or do you hear human rights, human rights, human rights? Obviously you hear human rights. So doesn't human rights negate God's law and make it null and void? So do human rights negate God's law, yes or no? Every single one of them is gone by now. Hey YouTube, my name is Matthew Cortman and this is Bible Scholar Reacts, a series of videos in which I, a biblical scholar, react to some of the craziest stuff you can find on the internet. Today, we're going to be looking at a recent video that Walter Weith went ahead and put out about human rights. That's right, <laughs> Walter Weith has come out and said most recently that human rights are from the devil and that supporting human rights is part of aligning oneself with Satan. So this episode from his series, What's Up Prof, it's episode number 70, and it was uploaded on July 1st of 2021. So I've done lectures on this in the past, but it's necessary just to recap, so that we just get a basic idea. Now in New York, Pope Benedict, the 16th yesterday upheld the United Nations as a crucial defender of human rights and a force for peace, while warning that unless those human rights are considered God-given, they will be subject to erosion and revocation. Remember what Martin Smith said, if it sounds unproblematic, keep looking, there's a problem, right? And that's so true, because if you read some of these articles, it's so sugar-coated. And yes. it sounds so nice. Yes. And like we've mentioned in the previous one, if it doesn't look problemsome, look deeper. Problem, right? This sounds completely unproblematic, right? Uh, unless those human rights are considered God-given, they will be subject to erosion or revo revocation. I think that makes a lot of sense. I feel like a lot of churches would amen it. Vith, I predict, is going to find a way to make this problematic. In three, two, one, let's find out. Human rights are the antithesis of mm. God's law. Human rights are the antithesis mm. of God's law. Jesus have mercy. Uh, I, I can't, I just can't make up this stuff. He says human rights are satanic. I just, I don't know, uh, I don't know what to say. This, this is a dangerous philosophy that's being promoted. This is a dangerous way of thinking that he's giving. And it is a danger to the church. I mean, like, I could make light of this, like the Flat Earth video. I could be trying to make this really funny. But this is serious. This is a danger. And if you don't wake up to it, then it's it'll overtake you. Human rights versus the law of God. The great philosophers, they were Jesuits. And they are the think tank behind the first... Declaration of Human Rights. Human Rights, Human Rights, Human Rights, Human Rights. But Ten Commandments, Ten Commandments, Ten Commandments. Nope. We have something else. Oh, the Pope has become the champion of human rights. Remember, he's Jesuits instituted, instituted it in the first place. He's the head of a so-called Christian church. Shouldn't he champion God's law? No, he's championing human rights. Human rights are now what? God-given. This is fascinating. Which God are we talking about? Certainly not the God of heaven. This is another God. And therefore God's law will have to be changed, although it's written in stone and may not be changed. The man of sin would change God's law and replace it with another God's law. Human rights. Are you getting me now? So I must change God's law, 
So it becomes a universal law. Then I replace it with human rights. It's in fascism, Nazism, liberation theology, interventionism, and socialism. This is what we have in the world today. Fascinating. I hope you are beginning to see everything that you ever were slowly disappearing in the sand. Can you see it? So in other words, the false teaching have become so widespread that they have infiltrated into a political system and have become world doctrine. How one standard was laid aside and how mankind adopted another standard. And may God help us to choose between standards. And this standard was termed the Manifesto of Human Rights. Fascism. Fasci fascism. If you think of Adolf Hitler, all power in one man. He was called the Führer. Now, human rights, what has that got to do with fascism? Isn't that kind of interesting? I would say it's kind of interesting. And it looks good on paper, but actually violates every principle of the Word of God. Every principle of the Ten Commandments is violated. And it is difficult to see because it looks so good. Human rights are the antithesis of God's law. Human rights are the antithesis of God's law. Sugarcoat it again to look as though they are in harmony with God's law. Human rights are the antithesis of God's law. That is a, this is a really dangerous video. What he is suggesting here is going in very dangerous directions. And of course he's going to deny it and say, oh, well, I'm not trying to go that way. I'm not trying to do that. No, what you're doing here is deeply irresponsible and dangerous. And you should repent of it, revoke it, rewind it, or else the conferences should be rebuking you in regarding it. It should be made clear by the church what is already generally known by its members um, in the conference offices that this is wrong. It's not Adventist. They, ca they called him out in regards to him date setting, but they need to call him out for a lot more. Like, if you don't understand the dangers that are apparent here, then we're in a darker area than you'd ever want to be in. So this is all very fascinating. Honor your father and your mother. No. No. In, in human rights, child rights stands above parental rights. Correct. It's a reversal of God's mm -hmm. order. Stop it. Get some help. You have human rights. And you have a special category of human rights, which is called child right. Now, which stands higher? The right of the child or the right of the parent in human rights? Child right is higher. Child right is higher. So that if you make decisions for your child, which the government deems unfit, may the government interfere in your personal lives and, if necessary, remove your children from you and put them under foster care under government supervision. Yes or no? Yes. All right? So the Bible says, honor your father and your mother. But human rights says, honor your child. So, is the fifth commandment gone on the basis of human rights? Yes or no? Yes? And the question is, where do you stand? Do you go along with the norms and standards and laws of this society, contrary to the law of God, or do you stand by God? What happened in the Middle Ages if you decided to stick with the Bible and the Bible only? You became subject to the Inquisition. Children's rights are by international legislation higher than parental rights. So much so, that if you do not comply, they can take your children away because you are breaking the law. Now, which law is higher according to the Bible? If you're not abusive, that is. That's different. 
If you're not abusive, that is, that's different. If you're not abusive, that is, that's different. Which law is higher, according to the Bible? Parental rights. So I have the right as a parent, according to the Bible, to train my child as I deem fit. The United Nations Convention on the Rights of the Child is an international human rights treaty that grants all children and young people aged 17 and under a comprehensive set of rights. Parents, butt out. You have no right over your child's sexual choices. So we have a universal human rights law in direct contradiction to God's law. The United Nations Convention on the Rights of the Child. You see, in human rights, parental rights are lower than child rights. Child rights are number one. Parental rights come thereafter. Not in the Bible. The Bible says, honor your father and your mother. So parental rights stand above child rights. So the moral decisions that a parent makes, he has the right in his household to make the children subject to his moral decisions, but not according to human rights. So this is a reversal. This think tank for human rights has opined that parents have no right to interfere in their children's sexual preferences. So the rights of the child stand above parental rights, a reversal of God's commandment. That's right. Child rights don't matter as much as parental rights. Parents are like an oligarchy. They, they are a dictator. They have complete and utter control and, and, and the Children have to honor their parents. Children have no safety. They should not be given that safety because that goes against God's law. Are you hearing the insanity? This is the surest way to get people away from Christ. What he's doing here is getting to a point where you're moving Christians so far from Christ that Christ no longer looks like the gospel anymore. It's, it's dangerous. This is dangerous. They are based on the natural law inscribed on human hearts and present in different cultures and civilizations. And here's the key. Human rights are based on natural law. And we need to know exactly what that means. Here, let me, let me give you the actual answer. The idea of natural law is that there are natural truths that can be determined from just looking at nature that are believed to stem from our very creation. And so the idea of human rights stemming from natural law is simply to say that our human rights are intrinsic to our humanity. They stem from our very creation. They are given to us from creation. They are not something that can be taken away because it was given by God at creation. They're not something that are given by governments. They are intrinsic to humanity. Human rights, the Pope said, are the key to world peace and security. Again, here we have a philosophy, a natural law philosophy, because human rights are based on natural Actually, law, yeah. in juxtaposition to the Ten Commandments. Correct. And even this natural law is inscribed on your human heart Correct. where the commandments are supposed to be inscribed. Correct, and they come from the divine heart. Yes. So again we have this clash, the one form against the other. This is very important that we understand that. Corporate needs you to find the differences between this picture and this picture. Indel has told us there are at least seven. Okay, I already see one. Give me. Okay. They're the same picture.
Now, there are human rights that God is absolutely for. Uh, what? Huh? What? I, wait, do you speak out of two sides of your mouth? I don't understand this. Human rights? Antithesis of God's law. But God's also in favor of some human rights. Huh? It is your human right to have freedom of choice. Yeah. Right? And God was prepared to die right. for that. But your freedom of choice in these minds of these people is limited to the common good, yeah. which is defined by Rome and contrary to the word of God. Huh? Because if he claims that they are God-given and they are contrary to the commandments of God, then which God gave them? According to the papacy, human rights must be considered as God given. Now, I have a problem. What if some of the human rights are the exact opposite of the law of God? Is God divided in himself? Or is this a new lawgiver? And if it is a new lawgiver, then what God are we speaking about? Because if it's not the God of the Bible, it must be another God. Truly, think about this. He defended freedom of choice as something intrinsically a human right given by God to humanity, citing Jesus dying to defend it, citing Adam and Eve exercising their right for it. And yet, and yet he just claimed that anything that could possibly lead as a human right to you disagreeing with the Ten Commandments means that it came from a different God. The freedom to choose, the freedom to say no to God, does lead you to be able to go against the Ten Commandments. And he just said that that earlier, he said that that was from God. So, I mean, again, he doesn't even hear what he's saying. He can't seem to make up his mind on this. I, I just, I hope that you're listening carefully and noticing that inconsistency. Because, really, he's not coherent. And his ideas are not coherent. And that's why he's always saying, oh, I'm not really saying this when it gets too controversial. Oh, I'm just putting a thought out there. I mean, it's because it's all incoherent. It's just his random musing. Vyth here is just honestly promoting such dangerous ways of thinking so incoherently and so utterly unchristlike. He is creating right now, attempting to create a dichotomy between just human rights and God. The exact kind of thing that is so dangerous for our society. And so in some sense, this video is almost more dangerous than anything else Vyth has ever done that I've seen, precisely because Vyth now has taken steps to create a divide between morality intrinsically known by human beings to an, a sort of abstract divine command model. But before we continue any further, I just want to give a shout out and a thank you to our sponsor for this video, which is Adventist Today. So Adventist Today, I'm so happy that they believe in creators like me and want this kind of material to get out there. And I'm certainly happy that they are encouraging and promoting other voices in Adventism who otherwise would not have that kind of uh, platform or attention. So please go ahead and check them out if you're happy that they are helping to promote material like this video. Richard M. Gula, this is a Jesuit view. The advantage of using natural law is that the church shows great respect for human goodness and trusts the human capacity to know and choose what is right. Martin, <laughs> this is the exact antithesis of the biblical view. This is the exact antithesis of the biblical view. This is the exact antithesis of the biblical view. Man has a fallen nature mm -hmm. and he does not have the capacity to set a moral compass.
Okay, so what we're now learning about Vyth, or I at least am learning, is that Vyth actually is a radical Calvinist. So he's actually, he's he's very much diverged from Adventism and from most biblical Christianity. And he's gone ahead really now and just gone into the crazy town of human depravity of a Calvinist variety. So this is not a typical Adventist teaching. This would not, in a sense, fit within his own denomination and it certainly is going now in a direction that is very dangerous. And so this this is at least providing me some context now. Essentially, what he's now arguing is that human beings have no ability to choose what is right and wrong. That when we fell, we somehow lost that ability. Now, of course, that is so counter-opposed to what the Bible actually says. So realistically speaking here, Vyth is presenting a view that's fundamentally un-Adventist, fundamentally un-Christian for the most part. And it is really sad and unfortunate that he's getting away with promoting this kind of material. Pastors should not and must not allow their congregants to think that this is acceptable. It is not, okay? It's not that no one can listen to him. It's not that anyone... But they should understand that there is a clear divide between someone like him who claims to be representing Adventism, but is most assuredly not, and what is actual Adventist theology, what is genuine teaching uh, that uh, Adventists believe and that most Christians can accept and believe that is based in the Bible, this is, this is a joke. If you appreciate that and you enjoy watching me struggle and suffer and respond to these things, then please hit that subscribe button, click that like button. When I switch on my new computer, I have to look at Ouroboros every single day, going ying, 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 ying around there.